this is one of those videos where people are going to be freaking out. Tucker, you almost died. Your chase care got stuck in the lines. You use your speed bar too low. You didn't take your vitamins. I'm calling the FAA. I'm calling the DMV. And I'm also calling your mom because she needs to get you more vitamins. What is going on, people of the interweb? We're doing a classic vlog video today. And the topic of discussion today is gonna be around my Viterazzi Factory R engine that you can just see peeping through the back window. I got this engine a couple months ago, swapped it onto my Scoutmobile, and I've been running it ever since. I made an initial impressions video when I first installed the engine, but I wanted to kind of come back to it after I've had some experience with the engine and do some longer term impressions. I posted up on Facebook that I was gonna do this video. I asked you guys what questions you wanna hear answered. And the most frequently asked question was, is it worth the price tag? Now for reference, I'm gonna pop up a normal Moster 185 Plus on the screen. Then I'm gonna pop up the Factory R here in the US. Obviously, whether or not the price tag is worth it is extremely, what's the word? Subjective. I mean, it depends on your budget, it depends on what features you value, but I'm gonna try to help answer that question a little bit in this video. Today, it is 62 degrees currently, spring is in the air, and we're gonna do some flying later, but first I have to run over to the shop, grab a few things, and I figured I'd bring you guys along for that. Mom, if you're watching this, I'm getting you that hoodie I promised for the last couple weeks. Check out this crane. So while I was over at the shop, we made these cool little sticker decals based off of the blueprint design. I figured as a weekend promotion, we're gonna throw these in every single order placed until Sunday at midnight. We're not gonna sell them anywhere else and they'll only be available for this time span. So if you want one and you like them, place an order on tuckergot.com before Sunday at midnight and you'll find one in your order for free. Alrighty, so we made it down here into the park and it's been overcast all day, so I'm hoping that it's smooth air and we get a nice long flight tonight. When we get up, I wanna talk about the performance, the reliability, and also the aesthetics a little bit to try to help answer the question of if this engine is worth the price tag. Beyond that, I wanna remind you guys of two different things. First off, like I said in the first video I made about this engine, Viterazzi sent the engine over for free. So they sponsored that episode and I don't necessarily have an ongoing relationship with them. When they sponsor a video, I let you guys know. This particular video I'm making all on my own just because I want to. The other thing I wanna remind you guys of, and if you missed the first video, definitely go back and watch it, but this engine slightly unique in that it has the 287 reduction. The reduction is this bit right here, this pulley, and that kind of determines the gearing per se. What that means is if I compare this to a standard Moster with the standard reduction, it's really not comparing apples to apples. Big Bertha, my trike mobile, for example, has the bigger reduction that this engine has, so that's more so apples to apples, but this engine spinning 130 centimeter prop while Big Birth is spinning a 140. So just keep in mind those factors. What I'm primarily gonna be talking about is this engine with this reduction with this propeller, which is the 130 centimeter prop. Let's see about flying. Maybe we'll get some cloud plundering in today. Jeff on my right, Dan on my left. I got uh, the chase cam out for the first time in like half a century. But here's the, uh, the short plan for this flight. Fly that way, intercept that hot air balloon, land at a park that's over the hill, maybe meet some pedestrians, take off, probably fly around the hill and come back. And then hopefully go above the clouds if that happens. But first, miniature tree slalom in the nursery. Oh, 
chase cams, all kinds of fucked up. Shit. Okay, problem solving. The nearest place I can land is this park. Cause my shit's all fucked up. Yeah, I gotta land. I don't want to tweak those lines and try to knock off the uh, chase cam because it might wrap around my brake line and get all kinds of scary. So we're gonna gingerly fly it over the hill and make a safe landing. That's funny, I was just saying, I haven't flown with my chase cam in a while. Figured it would be time to get her out. What happens? She gets all kinds of tangled. The wing isn't reacting any which way, so I'm not insanely concerned, but it has my uh, B's and my C's stuck together, which is weird. All right, we are just gonna come in for a nice stable landing. <laughs> Let's see, hypothetically, we should be landing in that direction. So I'm gonna come in over this baseball diamond. Hey, Jimmy. I think it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's not supposed to happen. Let's investigate this. Freaking Mildred. Dang, that is very jacked up. Be careful with your chase cams, kids. They might get you killed. What a beauty! Uh. Did, did you see my chase cam? What's that? Did you see my chase cam? It was all jacked up in my lines. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought it looked like it was closer. Or yeah, it was in the lines, I think, the whole time. There goes Dan. What a butterfly. Got it. You see my message here? Yeah. I only noticed, like, when we got to the balloon. Really? <laughs> Like right when you took off, I was like, oh no! Yeah, it was pinching my B's and C's together. It, it looked pretty janky. Could you, could you feel it? Or? I didn't feel anything. I slalomed the shit out of the nursery and then it wasn't until the balloon I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? You guys on YouTube? Uh, yeah, I post on YouTube. Oh, cool. Are you Tucker Gott or is this... Yeah. <laughs> really? Yep. Awesome, dude. I'm just stopping by. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen you guys uh, flying before. Nice. I saw one of you do like a flip before you landed. Yeah, probably Dan. This guy. <laughs> yeah. How much does uh, stuff like this cost? Um, for brand new gear, like everything and training is about 15000 Okay. For like nice stuff. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, cool guys. We'll let you uh, do your thing. Yeah. Fun, guys. See you, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Okay. This time we're gonna double check. I didn't do anything wrong here. So here we are with the factory R. Hey, that's funny. Bye, Dan. I hope you find your dad. Careful, Jeff, careful. That's my dad. These park goers are probably like, what happened to damn Paramount fan man just landed and failed to take off again? So what happened there was when I took off, I think it got tangled right on the inflation, which has never happened before. And when I looked back to check it, I looked up and I saw the line in my peripheral but I didn't actually see the camera, which the camera's really hard to see. So note to self, you gotta be like an owl and turn all the way around. Anyways, that was about enough excitement for this flight. Hopefully the rest of it goes smooth. Let's talk about the topic I wanted to talk about, which is the engine on my back. First, I wanna talk about the power. And now, take into account, these are certified patented 
Tucker got butt dyno specifications. We're not using a uh, scientific thrust stand because that costs too much. But by the seat of my pants feel, um, I initially ranked this exact setup I'm flying now to be 10% more power than the normal motor. And I still stick to that, but here's the interesting thing. I put this motor in the hands of a bunch of pretty good pilots, like above average pilots. And it's funny because the range has gone from 10% all the way up to 30% on this specific propeller. But you know, it, that's seat of the pants feel for you. And I mean, numbers don't lie, but also I take into account, I value seat of the pants feel because we don't fly by numbers, we feel, we fly by feel. So if it feels like more power, that's good. If you can notice it, look at these little forklift cherry picker doohickeys. I wanna get one that's tall enough, rent it, and base jump out of it. Anyone that has a hookup, hit me up. Is the JLG Ultra Boom tall enough? I bet it would be, that looks like a tall one. Aside from the maximum power, the other characteristics, oh, what's up, deer? Love you. The other characteristics of this engine are all very pleasant to me. It's smooth, um, it has the classic power band that you always feel with the Boaster, nothing real different there. But the coolest thing, because of the different reduction, I feel like the low end power is a little more grunty. And also because of the reduction, I feel like the engine's never working really hard. It's not like revving as high. When you go to full power on a standard Moster, sometimes it just kind of feels like I'm hurting the engine and I want to let off just a little bit to be careful. With this engine, I can squeeze it full throttle and it just sounds content. Hey, Jimmy! So some people had asked on my Facebook comments thing, uh, if the reliability is at all sacrificed with this motor, pushing out more thrust and the like. And, you know, I mean, time will tell, but my impression so far is that it's gonna be as reliable, if not more reliable than the standard Moster. I say possibly more reliable because the quality of components, like the CNC crankcase and titanium bolts and stuff like that, I would hope that they would last a little longer. Aside from that, let's talk aesthetics. Now this is one category that um, I guess I was a little more impressed with than I expected to be. When I opened it out of the box, you know, seeing this engine in person versus on video or in pictures, it definitely looks way more beautiful in person. And over time of using it, it really made me feel happy to use it. When I take it out to the field, we run into people that know nothing about paramotors all the time. And even people that know nothing about paramotors can identify that this engine is pretty special. I've also felt the urge to, you know, take nice pictures of it and put them on my Instagram story. And this is one of those things that may, need, may mean absolutely nothing to a lot of people. To me, I've always been someone that takes a little bit of pride in the aesthetics of the paramotor. Some paramotors are ugly. The way I would break it down, this is, this is the point I've been building up to, and this is, I guess, kind of important. The way I would break it down is, in my mind, the value of the motor, you have to give it at least 50% performance and 50% aesthetics. That's how I would break it down. So if you're buying this engine just for the performance and you don't care about aesthetics, I don't know that it would be worth it. Look at this damn silo. A lot of people are asking the question of would you recommend this engine to a beginner or your average pilot? And that's where I would say no, because I don't think it's really designed for the beginner or average pilot. It's a limited production series of engines. Obviously it's kind of a exclusive collector's item, so it's only meant to appeal to a small audience of people. And I think that audience of people is the enthusiasts, the competition pilots, or the expert advanced pilots. Assa, Jeff. It just doesn't have the same ring. It's gotta be Assa, dude. Assa, dude. All right, I'm gonna fly over the school, and if these kids start waving, I'm gonna throttle off, 
I'm gonna yell, hey, Jimmy! Hey, Jimmy! Just creeping, don't mind me. Oh my god. They have the most marvelous swoop pond here. So they put up signs that say we're not allowed to fly paramotors from here, as in take off or land. They don't say that we're not allowed to foot drag their puddles. Current entry over here. Oh, I just splashed my shoe. I want to set it down earlier this time. Miss my mark before. Mark, who's Mark? Oh yes, sirree, my sock's getting wet. <laughs> that was a genuine giggle. But in other news, we totally lost Dan. Oh, dude, I can see a bald eagle from here. Why is there a bald spot on the top of this hill? Oh, dude, I think there's two. His name is Dan. He flies a fan. He's very tan. And Dan likes ham. <laughs> All right, mid-flight story. Months ago, last year, I flew with a young man named Gavin uh, in my tandem trike. And I never posted any video about it, but recently I did the last video about my tandem trike and my long-term impressions on it, and I included a clip of Gavin. His dad just sent me a video of him showing Gavin that he was in my video. There's me on the laptop. There's Gavin. <laughs> this is like Inception. I can't hear the audio, but he, he just said, is that me? I think he's laughing, he's smiling, he's in the video! This is Gavin in the video section. Gavin was in a video, watching himself in a video, while I filmed him watching himself on a video, in a video. Insane! It's crazy! Shout out to you, Gavin. Oh, shimmery timbers! There's a hole over there. Woo! <laughs> yes! I finally found a hole! Way a hole! Another nice big hole! And look at the world above the cloud layer. That is handsome. It's actually warmer up here. It's cold and moist down there. Yes! I didn't think it would happen. I almost gave up hope and came in for a landing. This is a lesson to all you kids out there. Never give up. Coming in for the kill. I want to get you, Dan. We have contact. What a day. What a time to be alive. It's freaking cotton candy up here, brother. And then we're back down too cold and dreary. Windsock verification. Analyzing. Swoop setup. Must not crash into children. Butter my biscuits and call me Sally. We're coming in hot. On the white grass. All right, time for some conclusions. I wanted to leave you guys with some schematic diagrams that I found kind of interesting about not only the Moster Factory R, but the Moster line in general. 
These diagrams kind of give a little bit of insight into why the Moster is the way it is. So if we look at the first diagram, it shows a side profile and it indicates that the distance between the vibration isolators and the propeller plate is 221 millimeters. Now the idea is to keep this measurement as small as possible so that the center gravity of the engine is closer to the pilot's back, making it feel lighter in turn. If we look at the next diagram, this shows kind of a back view of the engine. And the idea behind this one is the symmetry of the weight distribution left to right. Obviously you want symmetry and weight so that it's not, you know, weighted more on one side and pulling more on one shoulder versus the other, but it also helps in the way that the engine handles vibrations. The next diagram shows another side profile and this time it's showing the compactness top to bottom of the engine. And it's also showing that the crankshaft of the engine is aligned between the vibration isolators. The idea behind having a more compact engine top to bottom means that you can raise up the fuel tank, have better aerodynamics, better balance, and a more compact package overall. The final diagram just shows kind of how the main components that are really hot, the cylinder head and the manifold of the exhaust are in the range that picks up more airflow naturally from natural airflow and also from a cooling profile of the propeller. So I thought those were kind of interesting from a technical aspect, applying both to the factory R and to any Moster. Anyways, I had a lot of fun on yesterday's flight. I hope you guys enjoyed that flight. And I hope you stick around because we've got a bunch more projects coming, which by the way, I'm waiting for a large package to arrive, which is going to be one of my next projects. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be beautiful and it's going to be a lot of fun. Also, don't forget if you want to get one of these sweet blueprint stickers, make sure you place an order this weekend before Sunday at midnight. Figured this would be kind of a cool little promotional item to throw into those orders. I will see you guys in the next episode. Till then, fly safe, have fun. Peace. Thank you.